Rhabdomyolysis is a condition where skeletal muscle breaks down, releasing intracellular contents into the bloodstream. This can lead to myoglobinuria, the presence of myoglobin in the urine. The condition can be triggered by various factors, including trauma, drug use, infections, and intense physical activity. In adults, the most frequent causes are drugs of abuse and alcohol, followed by medications, muscle diseases, and trauma. In children, rhabdomyolysis is less common and generally milder, with viral myositis, trauma, and connective tissue disease being the primary causes. Patients in a coma are at risk for rhabdomyolysis due to prolonged pressure on gravity-dependent body parts. Alcohol consumption can also lead to rhabdomyolysis through muscle compression and direct toxic effects. Statin-related myopathies, including rhabdomyolysis, are dose-dependent and vary depending on the specific statin used. Infections, both bacterial and viral, can also trigger rhabdomyolysis, as can strenuous physical activity, especially in poorly conditioned individuals or those exposed to high temperatures and humidity. Pathophysiology. The pathophysiology of rhabdomyolysis involves injury to skeletal muscle, leading to the release of intracellular contents such as myoglobin, creatine kinase, CK, aspartate aminotransferase, and potassium. The final common pathway in muscle cell injury appears to be the disruption of the sodium potassium ATPase pump and calcium transport, resulting in increased intracellular calcium and subsequent muscle cell necrosis. This process also activates phospholipase A2, vasoactive molecules, proteases, and the production of free oxygen radicals, further contributing to muscle damage. Clinical features. The symptoms of rhabdomyolysis are typically acute and include muscle pain, weakness, malaise, low-grade fever, and dark, often brown, urine. However, muscle symptoms may be absent in up to half of cases. Severe rhabdomyolysis can present with nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and tachycardia. Mental status changes may occur due to urea-induced encephalopathy. Swelling and tenderness of the affected muscle groups may be observed, though these signs are not always present. The condition can affect muscles locally or diffusely, with the thighs, calves, and lower back being commonly involved. Diagnosis The most sensitive and reliable indicator of muscle injury in rhabdomyolysis is an elevated serum CK level. A five-fold or greater increase above the upper limit of normal approximately 800 to 1,000 international units per liter, is generally required for diagnosis. CK levels typically rise within 2 to 12 hours after muscle injury, peak within 24 to 72 hours, and then decline at a rate of about 39% of the previous day's value. Failure of CK levels to decrease in this manner suggests ongoing muscle necrosis. Myoglobinuria occurs when more than 100 grams of skeletal muscle is injured. Myoglobin levels rise before CK levels but are rapidly cleared from the plasma. Myoglobinuria can cause reddish-brown urine when levels exceed 100 mg per deciliter. A urine dipstick test positive for blood but with few or no red blood cells on microscopy suggests myoglobinuria. However, the absence of elevated myoglobin levels does not rule out rhabdomyolysis. Additional laboratory tests should include serum electrolytes, calcium, phosphorus, and uric acid levels to identify complications such as hyperkalemia, abnormal calcium and phosphorus levels, and hyperuricemia. An electrocardiogram should be obtained if hyperkalemia is suspected. Serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen levels are necessary to assess for acute kidney injury. Disseminated intravascular coagulation is a potential complication, so a complete blood count and coagulation studies may be warranted. Pre-hospital care. For patients with suspected rhabdomyolysis, particularly those with crush injuries or prolonged extrication times, early and aggressive intravenous fluid resuscitation is critical to prevent acute kidney injury. Normal saline should be administered at a rate of 1 liter per hour initially, followed by 500 milliliters per hour alternating with 5% dextrose in normal saline at 1 liter per hour. Potassium, or lactate-containing solutions should be avoided until electrolyte and acid-base status is known.
Emergency Department Care In the emergency department, aggressive intravenous rehydration should continue for 24 to 72 hours. One approach is to rapidly correct the fluid deficit with crystalloids, followed by an infusion rate of 4 milliliters per kilogram per hour, aiming for a urine output of 3 to 4 milliliters per kilogram per hour. Another method targets a urine output of 200 to 300 milliliters per hour. There is no strong evidence supporting the use of urine alkalinization with sodium bicarbonate or forced diuresis with mannitol or loop diuretics. However, some studies suggest that mannitol and bicarbonate may reduce the risk of acute renal dysfunction in patients with CK levels greater than 10,000 international units per liter. If bicarbonate is used, care must be taken to avoid metabolic alkalosis or hypocalcemia. Mannitol should be used cautiously as it can cause osmotic diuresis in hypovolemic patients. A urinary catheter should be placed in critically ill patients or those with acute kidney injury to monitor urine output. Cardiac monitoring is essential due to the risk of electrolyte-induced dysrhythmias. Hemodynamic monitoring may be necessary for patients with heart disease, pre-existing renal disease, or advanced age to avoid fluid overload. Hypocalcemia in the early stages of rhabdomyolysis typically does not require treatment unless there are signs of hyperkalemia-induced cardiotoxicity or severe hypocalcemia. Hyperkalemia, which is most severe in the first 12 to 36 hours after muscle injury, may require treatment with insulin and glucose, though this may be less effective in rhabdomyolysis-induced hyperkalemia. Ion exchange resins, such as sodium polystyrene sulfonate, may be used. Hyperphosphatemia should be treated with oral phosphate binders when serum levels exceed 7 mg per deciliter. Dialysis may be necessary in severe cases. Complications Complications of rhabdomyolysis include acute kidney injury, acid-base disturbances, electrolyte imbalances, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and mechanical complications such as compartment syndrome or peripheral neuropathy. Acute kidney injury is often due to hypovolemia, acidosis, tubular obstruction, and the nephrotoxic effects of myoglobin. The presence of myoglobinuria or the degree of CK elevation does not reliably predict acute kidney injury, though the correlation is stronger in traumatic rhabdomyolysis. Compartment syndrome and peripheral nerve injury are mechanical complications that can result from muscle swelling. Nerve injury may cause paresthesias or paralysis, often affecting multiple nerves in the same extremity. Compartment syndrome requires prompt recognition and management to prevent permanent damage. Most healthy patients with exertional rhabdomyolysis and no comorbidities can be treated with oral or intravenous rehydration in the emergency department and discharged. However, Patients with significant risk factors or complications should be admitted for intravenous hydration and monitoring. Admission to a monitored bed is recommended for at least the first 24 to 48 hours to detect dysrhythmias and worsening renal function. Nephrology consultation should be considered for patients with hyperkalemia unresponsive to therapy or those with a high McMahon risk score. Conclusion Rhabdomyolysis is a potentially serious condition that requires prompt recognition and management to prevent complications such as acute kidney injury and electrolyte imbalances. Early and aggressive fluid resuscitation is the cornerstone of treatment, with careful monitoring of urine output and electrolyte levels. While the use of mannitol and bicarbonate remains controversial, they may be considered in select cases. Complications such as compartment syndrome and hyperkalemia require specific interventions, and dialysis may be necessary in severe cases. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.